This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we have a short tip video for how I load and light my Weber Smoky Mountain smoker. First thing, let's go ahead and start by loading the basket. We've got the charcoal basket right here. Today, I'm just gonna use some regular briquettes. Now, normally I would use a combination of briquettes and lump charcoal. Some people say that this thing is made for briquettes and other people, they just use the lump charcoal and go with it. I do not think that it was made for briquettes, but there is a difference in performance. If you want a hotter, longer, slow cook, I would probably use the lump charcoal, but you will want to fill it up really well. So I dump a little bit of charcoal in here to work with, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one, and I'm going to do something similar to the charcoal snake pattern around the outsides. And the goal is, is that I want a nice air circulation. So by doing this, I'm going to provide a nice little set of gaps around the edges. Now, of course, there'll be plenty of airflow from the bottom up, but this will ensure that you'll get airflow from the sides too. And as it burns, it's not gonna burn from one place or the other. It's gonna burn towards the opening and then back around in a loop. The reason for that is, is because that's where the air source is. When I need chunks, I usually buy something like a bag of Western wood chunks or B&B wood. In the bags, they come in assorted sizes, so you kind of have to sort through. I'm gonna show you a couple here. This one right here, would be like one of the smaller ones, and this one right here would be like one of the larger ones, and then they get a little bit larger than this, but not much, and usually if they're bigger than this, I'll split them in half. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the small one to the side, and then I'm gonna take one of these smaller ones, and I'm gonna place it right here. The air vent is located here, and I'm just placing it off to one side. Then I'm putting this larger one over here on the opposite side, kind of like that, and then the other one right here. And I don't know how well you can see that, but we'll try to pop a picture up here. It's basically structured in a triangle. <clears throat> so then I will take some of these leftover charcoals and spread them out a little bit around the wood chunks. And the reason is to hold them in place when I dump more charcoal on there, because I don't want to have to keep playing with this. So now once I've done that, as long as they pour carefully, we should be able to fill this up without knocking them over. Now today I'm not gonna fill this quite all the way up because I'm not going for a long smoke. But if I were trying to do 12 hours, I would wanna fill this completely to the brim, just straight across and then just take a couple of pieces out of the center. But since I'm only planning on smoking for about six hours, then a little more than half should be plenty. So now I'm gonna prepare a level bed right out in the middle. Now, you see it's all level like that. Normally, I would take and I would just light a charcoal chimney and pour it in there. But today I'm gonna to show you something a little bit different and we're gonna need a few more charcoals for that. We'll be right back. So if you can see down here, I made a little pyramid or also I like to call it a log cabin when we're talking about building fires. You can also use a few of the um, kindling splits and build a little log cabin and light that with a piece of uh, paper with a little bit of uh, vegetable oil on it. Now here is a tumbleweed this is one that I just grabbed out of my camping gear because I forgot to buy them. And then I'm gonna break it in half. And I think I'll put the fluffed up half in there because it'll probably light a little bit faster. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish burying that. And we're gonna complete the pyramid. So the idea is that we're gonna light this haystack lighter and it's gonna light that. Again, normally I would just do it in the charcoal chimney, but I wanted to show you this. And uh, if you haven't seen me use a charcoal chimney, I have a video that uh, is managing 
the fire in the char griller that just recently released on the channel. If you just click on that, you'll find it right there. And I'll try to put a link up here. So I've lighted the haystack. You can also use the master built paraffin lighters and stuff like that. Um, I would use less than more when you're lighting directly in your smoker because you want that to burn off completely before you put any food inside your smoker. I'm gonna move out of the way here and gonna let that go ahead and get going. You can see it's burning good. So we'll take a quick break here and then we'll be right back. It has been a little more than five minutes and the haystack is completely burned up. Uh, it's not quite where we want it yet, but here's what I'm gonna do to help it out. I'm gonna blow on it a little bit or you could use a mini yard blower or my favorite is a old hair dryer set on low. Now I'm just gonna blow on it a couple of times And it's so close to being ready. It just needs to be able to puff up and then you know it's ready, but it'll take a little bit longer. We don't want it rip roaring hot, but we want it going. So next thing I'm gonna do is take this small piece that I have left over and I'm gonna set this piece of wood right there. So it's just a little bit away from that piece that's in here, but pointing towards the front where the air vent is. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take off a couple of these pieces of charcoal off the top here and flip them over. I'm gonna carefully position them towards the air vent, just like that. We wanna make sure that we're not doing anything that'll put the fire out because it's still a pretty small fire. But that's what we want. I went ahead and grabbed the hair dryer so that way I could show you. This is just a beat up old generic hair dryer. I'm gonna make sure that I set it on the warm or cool setting, not the hot setting, and then turn it on to low. And that's it. We got it going good and we can go ahead and let it burn for a second and then we'll put it all together. So the last thing we're gonna do before we put it together is we're gonna move the charcoals towards the air vent so that way we stay on path here. I went ahead and moved the charcoals towards the air vent and made sure that we didn't get any of those pieces of wood lighted sooner than we wanted. I'll go ahead and put this on there. Be careful to line up the door with the front vent. That way, that spot that'll burn out first, if we need to add more charcoal, will be available for us. Then, I'll go ahead and put this on. Now, currently, I have this vent open all the way, and I have this vent open all the way. As soon as it gets just under the temperature I'm going for, which is 250 today, normally we'd be around 225, then what I'll do is I'll start shutting down the vents. First thing I'll do is I'll cut them both down to 50% and see how the temperature reacts, and then I, you can adjust up and down. I try to move the front vent and the back vent together. So first I close the front vent down a little bit if the temperature's too high, and then I close the top vent down both at the same time so we get an even balance. 
So uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you here today. And you can see that it is just smoking right along and it's a nice warm temperature. Um, we're already showing 125 degrees and we just put the lid on. So in a few minutes, it'll probably be up to the temperature that I'm looking for and I can go ahead and throw on my meat. I'm gonna throw a couple of pictures up here and today we're just doing a beef top round. Um, also sometimes referred to as a London broil cut. And uh, we're gonna get that going and uh, have that for dinner. But that's all of this video for today. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.